day one of the Monaco Yacht Show. The sun's shining, there's some incredible yachts on display, and I have to say it's pretty exciting to be back at the show after one year with no show at all. The very first thing I've done at this yacht show is come here to Icon Yachts, and there's a very good reason for that. You may well recognize this beautiful yacht here as being Ragnar, the conversion project that was done by Icon, um, and that I actually filmed a series of documentary videos to show the construction of. It's a tremendously popular yacht, not just on my YouTube channel with over a million views of all the videos together, but also worldwide. The yachting press absolutely loved this yacht. So I've come here actually not so much to talk about this, but to talk about some very big news that Icon have. So I'm with Tony Gale, who's the CEO of Icon Yachts. Thanks for spending the time, the time with me, Tony. You're welcome. The last time we spoke was just after I'd released the Ragnar video, which went on to get about a million views between all the various videos of Ragnar. Has that been a success for the shipyard as well? Well, it certainly opened up a lot of ideas to do another project. That's true. And uh, it's been traveling far and wide, I guess. Yes, and I think a lot of people have enjoyed seeing her and uh, seeing what you can do with a, a vessel that had a different life in the past recreate a new life, redefine and create a, um, well, a very special vessel for Icon. Because of course that was a conversion project, wasn't it? It wasn't a yacht that you designed right from the first metal plates. How, how did that idea come about? Uh, well, it came out about a little bit before my time at Icon, uh, but with a, a huge input from RWD um, design team. And it created something from an existing vessel to develop the idea of an explorer, explorer yacht, which would, uh, with its ice-breaking facility, uh, allow the vessel to go into those parts of the world that no others could. Yeah. And the, the scope of the project itself uh, had heavy development ideas back from the shipyard as well. And together with the owner's team, I think it created what she is today. And the inquiries that you get, are they mostly for explorer yachts? Well, after the success of Ragnar, yes, we had a lot of inquiries and they've been um, ongoing up till today. And that's led to quite a big announcement. Yes, I, I think behind me you can see our next new project and this is a, a vessel which also started life in the offshore world and uh, we will recreate something here with a, uh, an extremely well-known designer and she will have the chance to go back into her new life after two years in conversion and that will create a second vessel out on the waters from from our stable if you like uh, it's it, it created for icon a new opening in the market uh, we had developed three new build yachts previously we had done refits uh, we've done many large refits conversion of existing vessels, existing yachts, if you like. But the step from taking a vessel offshore into the yacht world is, I think, quite new. And what I think, can you tell me about the original ship that you're using? I think you call it a donor vessel, don't you? Yeah, that? donor or platform vessel. Yeah. So yeah. What, what can you tell me about the original platform vessel? She is an ideal platform in the sense that she already has a uh, huge volume of accommodation uh, which makes it worthwhile for us to add the luxury areas on the aft end of the vessel um, behind the bridge, uh, helicopter deck, um, she has super accommodation and I think you will, you will see that from our, our forthcoming announcements. Excellent, because yeah. of course Ragnar was very distinguishable because of the shape of the bow yeah. It's very, very um, unusual. This is distinguishable because the bow is so high out of the water. It's, uh, it's quite incredible. When I looked at the model, um, <laughs> yeah, the, the it, shape, it looks such a manly, robust. Uh, it, it is. It, it is. Um, it's, it's a very powerful vessel. I think if you stand on the pier alongside and you look up, uh, you don't believe that you're looking at a, a vessel which is slightly under 70 meters. So it is a very powerful vessel. She's been in heavy, heavy seas. She has a proven life. Um, 
She was built in Norway. Uh, she's she's commanded um, the seas and done very many rescue operations. Yeah. And I think her new life will be equally e equally formidable. It's an exciting new life ahead. Yeah. Can you give me? Are you able to give me any ideas of the sort of time frame when we'll actually see her launched? Is that you can yeah, talk we're considering about, about two years. About two years. Is that pretty average for a yacht of this size? Actually, what size is this? I haven't even asked. Sixty-six. You. So sixty-six meters. Two years to do the conversion project. Yeah. And that is that including the design time from from the designer. Well, we've already been working on the design for yeah. some months now. So uh, I think if you add six months at the front end of, of that period, yeah. uh, then you're looking at two and a half years for a project like right. this. Just so that those watching know, um, when I was at Icon, I visited a few times during the Ragnar project, and you have um, a small selection of potential donor mm -hmm. vessels with potential projects. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> it might be. <laughs> yeah. Which I was just very impressed with. It's a very proactive way of going about it. Uh, yeah, it's not so simple to find one of the vessels that really is suitable for, uh, for such a conversion. Uh, so I think the expertise that we built up now is uh, investigating the availability of the vessels, um, age, uh, performance, some of the parameters that we look at in, uh, in the yacht world of a white yacht are um, sometimes it might be speed, it might be noise, it might be the comfort. Um, the, the vessels that are built in the commercial world don't have those parameters built into them at start. Um, it's a particular requirement now when we do a conversion to put those, um, th those parameters back into the vessel. So air conditioning is vital, noise and comfort in the accommodation. Yeah. And, and that's a, uh, I, I think that, that lends itself to find the right vessel in the first place. Yeah. And what, what do you think from a, a yacht buyer's point of view, what, what do you think the advantage is of taking a donor vessel and doing a conversion over just starting from scratch and building a totally new vessel? Uh, well, we live in a world at the moment of um, climate crisis, um, carbon footprints is you know, some of the common terms used on social media. Um, taking an existing vessel means that that vessel is not scrapped. And you know, I think the, the idea now of redefining the vessel is is of a, of a big importance for an owner. Now the other thing I, I think that's worthwhile is that once you've selected the vessel, unlike building a new vessel where you start with a blank sheet of paper for your design, the new vessel is created from something that exists and so the owner is uh, intimately involved with that vessel from day one. Yeah. He sees her, he sees what she will become from a product that already exists. And I think this, uh, this shows us that the, uh, this intimate relationship with builder, shipyard, you know, shipyard facilities, owner, designer, that's important on a conversion. I, I can totally understand that because, um, as you know, I used to work for a, a yacht builder and sometimes the uh, owner would be invited to see the first plate cut. <laughs> but it's such it's an anti-climax because it's just a piece of metal. It's not very much. <laughs> so, so you had the opportunity of bringing the client to the shipyard and saying that is your yacht. So you can walk through it, you can look at it and you can really have an experience of the, uh, of the conversion as it takes Absolutely. place. Absolutely, yeah. And he's, uh, he's primarily involved from day one in the selection of the vessel. Yeah. I think that's important as well. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Tony. And I, I understand that we've actually got the designer coming to talk to us uh, as well. And that is the great Espen Ono. Yeah, he's built some huge, or he's designed some huge yachts. Yeah. And, and the, the interest that he shows in this vessel, and I'm sure he will tell you this, is that she's born in Norway as well. And of course, he's Norwegian, isn't he? <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm yeah. looking forward to meeting him. Thanks again, Tony. Okay, thank you. did for corporations and this is another letter we have in Norwegian it's an A with a, with a circle symbol. no okay. circle above and that's called uh, O 
this is my grandfather and uh, oh wow yeah, yeah, so oh is, seriously so you're yeah. like third generation <laughs> no i they, they, they were four my father was the first one who didn't build it because this was in the stopped in the early 60s because uh, <laughs> the glass fiber took over and, and he was uh, building the wood and you know it was a, a real transition and they didn't uh, ended up doing coffees for the day <laughs> do you not think that if he could see you it's now funny. and what you're designing now he he would literally but i keep this as, long as a reminder yes. of you know this is super sustainable ecological is wood yeah. there's no internal combustion engines there's yeah. no fuel there's no fuel on board it's just muscle yeah. power so you know what goes around comes around. It does, isn't it? Circular, right? Yeah. And you put that next to it. Well, yeah. Two opposites, isn't it? It's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? And that's in three gen two generations. Two gen they did this for four generations. And then what? my father was the first one who did, he went to town. This is, the other funny thing is, this is like as far away you can get from the sea in Norway, it's inland in the mountains, the river yeah. and the lake. And, uh, and my mom is from the west coast on the on the on the on the sea. Yeah. They built engines and they had a service yard for the fast ferries. Amazing. So, can you work cool. when you're in Norway? Can you work remotely fairly easily? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Work. So wherever you are, you just get your laptop and. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. And yes. Away you I go. mean, now anyone can work remotely, really, but yeah. I hate it. I mean, everything during the COVID, I was I'm tired of it because everything takes much longer. And the project that we're filming, which is Project Master, mm -hmm. it's at Icon Yachts. Has that been more of a challenge because it's a conversion project, or it must be different, I guess, from doing a whole new project from a white piece of paper? Yeah, a conversion project is different for many reasons. Um, one of them is that you're starting with a set of um, uh, conditions you cannot change. You have to decide what are we going to change, what are we going to keep. Perhaps consider this a restriction, but in many ways it makes it more exciting because there are certain things you're not allowed to touch or you better not touch, otherwise it doesn't make sense, may not be technically feasible or it may be you maybe I'll be overrunning the budget, but it's it's cool. And there is another interesting aspect to it, which is you give a new lease of life to something that or has already had a yes. life, and that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, which is the case of this particular project. You know. It's, and what, what's it's the starting like, point? Do you get together with the owner and with the shipyard first yeah. of all to get their aspirations and hopes? Yeah. Well, you're trying to define or to understand what their aspirations and hopes are and then you try to come up with a plan and see whether and discuss it and see whether this is within reach or what's technically possible. Yeah. Uh, I mean the vessel in question and these type of vessels they have a, a lot of reserve buoyancy and reserve stability so you can do quite a lot with them. Yeah. And they have this completely open aft decks that lend themselves very yeah. well to do conversions and yeah. add on superstructure and, and living space but um, so I notice yeah. you've added a lot of superstructure after the bridge on the on the current donor vessel it's pretty yeah, sure. much empty, well it? they were pretty much empty yeah. um, um, there I can show you on my iPad project I did like many 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 years ago when I started working on my own uh, I had a client, we ended up doing another boat for it was also a conversion, but it was a fishing vessel that was halfway converted and then we we kind of he bought it and finished the job. Um, and but my proposal to him was to do something very much along the lines of what we ended up doing now, like thirty years later with really? uh, with nearly thirty years, twenty five, six to six years later with uh, with uh, Project Master. And uh, it's very interesting because the concept is extremely simple and it was very well depicted, if I may say so. The concept is dead simple. You take a, an existing vessel, a donor vessel of this type, platform supply vessel, or in this case a rescue vessel, standby vessel, which has all the accommodation forward, the end room yeah. forward, and a big, open, unused deck space in the back. Uh, so uh, it has, it's a very good starting point for 
a conversion, and there's a good starting point for a conversion for a vessel that is to go into heavy seas and go around the world yeah. because a, those are seaworthy vessels designed to operate in all year round in the North Sea. So um, I'm very happy to be part of, of this project because when I met the owner, I, I explained this to him. I said, you know, I've always wanted to do this for a long time, and um, and here we are. And he found a very good vessel. A very good yeah. vessel. The yard had done a conversion uh, recently, as you know, right yeah. now. So they have a lot of experience, and they've done a thorough job, good job in finding a suitable donor vessel. And so, yeah, all the elements, all the stars were aligned, and um, we sat we sat down with the owner, and we sat down with uh, with. Uh, see here, this is a sixty. 59 meter vessel. Well, this, this is the one in from years 90, ago. 19, yeah, oh, 1993, so 28 years ago. Ah. Seventh inquiry in 1993 when I just started. You see? <laughs> That's you see, amazing. Uh, you see the concept here, I just drew yes, a yeah. sketch. It's a oh, big open deck. Yeah. You prefabricate an accommodation module with water and electricity connected, and, and you you're resiliently mounted and off you, you go. You were ahead of your time, weren't you, <laughs> in 1993? Yeah, what's very yeah. interesting, yeah. you see the geometries of this, yes. which were designed. If you look at one boat, which is here at the show, yeah. which is an episode called SCAT, you will see what this in there. You yes. see? Yeah, absolutely right. And SCAT on the side, if you look carefully, on the aft corner, sports starboard side, it says 9906. That was a sixth inquiry. Ah. In 1999, so this is numbering system. This is 9307. Yeah. That was 1996. <laughs> That's incredible. So, uh, oh, so you get a a <laughs> special satisfaction from doing this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. And it's a Norwegian vessel. It's um, it was designed and, and built in Norway by the company that uh, they designed the Ulstein, the Olivia Ol. Oh right. Um, yeah. And uh, it was owned by a Norwegian outfit. So you know, I, I, I kind of felt that. Uh, all the stars were aligned, and of course, a very nice owner who could, uh, we could you could feel he's really into it, and, and he gives his whole heart and soul. And, his and I'm, I'm always curious when I meet somebody who's super successful, which you are definitely extremely successful at yacht design, and you're no longer just a one man band I think we're doing 9307. You know, for business, all work, I just do <laughs> I do interviews and stuff. <laughs> But how do you, um, how involved do you get during the stage of construction on something like uh, Project Master? So we follow through with, you know, we come up with a concept, which is what we're going to show you now. You, yes. you, you, de you develop that concept. You, you basically start from into the thinking in 3D, but you start off with a layout and come yeah. off with a sensible GA. That's very important. The GA is is the backbone of the boat. Yeah, and for the benefit of the viewers, the GA is the general arrangement, so that's your The general plan arrangement view. plan, which is basically the floor plan, if you use the terms for a house. Um, come up with a good, good plan for the, creating nice spaces for the guests, for the owners, outside, inside, and also workable crew areas with good circulations to make sure the crew and the guests not, do not cross yeah. unintentionally. Yeah. Um, you know, circulation from the galley up to the pantry, sort of close to the areas where people eat and so on and so on. And uh, so this is very important. And uh, of course you work in 2D, but you think in 3D, you sketch out and, uh, and uh, then you start going in to CAD and, and we did, a, I think, came up with a good GA. And with this yacht, uh, you, you'd inherited uh, some, you'd inherited a certain layout with Sure. Structural bulkheads and uh, things that couldn't be moved. But you know, the, bulk, the, the, the structural bulkheads, of course, are below the main deck, the bulkhead deck. Um, and there is relatively, we modify hardly anything there, really. This is the beauty with this is that this deck, the open deck, is above the bulkhead deck. So within the limits of what you can do with regard yeah. to adding mass and, and mass distribution, with regard to stability and trim. Uh, you're pretty free to do whatever you like, yeah. as long as you obviously have to comply with uh, uh, escape routes and so on of what you create. Yeah. But you have the back of the house for the crew, the crew accommodation, the galley, the engine room, the bridge, 
and uh, and uh, if you I don't know whether you have seen the the, the, the design of it it's on the screen here no oh, yeah it's um, we try to retain most of the character of the vessel which has got a very strong character with a high bow a receiver the all the bridge uh, windows all the you know it's extremely you know powerful to me it's yeah. a very purposeful vessel yeah that also had a very I should say uh, noble mission in life and uh, rescue yeah, it was a rescue you know, ship. that's right yeah. so, um, and then we've tried to uh, design something which from the outside looks like it fits into the overall geometry of the vessel yeah. uh, you can see the bridge windows are kind of it's, it's very linear it's kind of edgy design and we try to to incorporate that into what we have added in terms of superstructure of the aft ship but yeah. doing it simple with full height windows throughout yeah. try to uh, make it contemporary and also easy to build and easy to maintain because all those glazed surfaces don't need to be painted or fed sure. or so we're trying to kill many birds with few stones yeah. um, but it also create this contrast between this very massive bow you can see it's all steel heavy and of course whilst thinking about all the um, sort of back of the house issues such as good working spaces for the crew yeah. and we create a new galley circulation for the crew to arrive at, to do to gain access to the area where people um, eat a nice area for getting on and off the boat at the back with the tenders of water toys so I think when you're on it you will feel like you're on a much bigger boat yeah. uh, and uh, and you will have the experience of a much bigger boat yeah. I think. One last question for you, Aspen, because I know that you're a super busy <laughs> designer. You are busy. <laughs> <laughs> you're very relaxed. You, you're like the swan always, on the top of the water whose <laughs> his, his, no. his feet are pedaling away. Um, a lot of the viewers on the YouTube channel, when you start to talk about explorer yachts, they get really excited. There's a massive demand, even from people who are just passionate about yachting but will never own a yacht. People are just fascinated by explorer yachts. And it looks as well like the industry is also going in a direction of more and more explorer yachts. Do you think that's here to stay? Do you think it's a fad? What do you think the appeal is of the explorers? Uh, I, I think it's here to stay and I think it's a trend that we will see more and more of as the clients are, I think the whole the population or the the characteristics of, of the clientele we're dealing with is changing a lot. Yeah. When I started in this industry decades ago as a young man, um, most of the alternatives were kind of at the end of their career and they would, you know, indulge themselves with a nice yacht and then yeah. and, and they would invite their children and their grandchildren on board and yeah. they would go cruising. And some of them did go faraway places, but most of them would, you know, be hovering around in the med or yeah. Caribbean in the winter and, and and of course over the last you know since the dot com and the tech guys came in and many people made a lot of money at, at an early age and obviously they have a different lifestyle much yeah. more active lifestyle um, and and that's I think this phenomenon has really amplified the this trend we see for for exploring all these guys people who want to go to places you can only go if you bring your own bed, so to yeah. say. You know, Greenland, there are not many hotels in Greenland. Yeah. Uh, I've been out to Antarctica with one of our explorer yachts. There are absolutely zero hotels. Yeah. Unless you go there by boat or you're a scientist going to a scientific base somewhere, yeah. you just cannot go there. Um, and, uh, and I think this is, uh, people realize that. So uh, there's also another phenomenon I think with it's about experiences and we live in a world of Instagram and pictures and you know, yeah. you know people love to share experiences. Yes. I've been here, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, which is kind of superficial in a way, but I think there's something much more profound in all this that, yes, if some of these images we have created for uh, for this, this for the shipyard of the clients, show yeah. the vessel in quite remote places, yeah. places I've been, a bit of Oman in there, a bit of yeah. Norway, uh, we didn't put Antarctica in there, but for me going to Antarctica and in the Arctic as well, for me it's been really sort of transforming experiences. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if I had the money and 
means I would definitely love to bring my friends or family, yeah. particularly kids, to these places. Yeah. Fantastic. Espen, voilà. thank you so much. You've been absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Sorry about the yeah. delay. No, no problem at all. I'm, I'm glad that I finally uh, met you as well. Uh, <laughs> Here we are. I haven't been a fan for a long time. Well, that was a very productive day one of the Monaco Yacht Show. Fantastic to catch up with Tony Gale and the people at Icon. If ever there's a shipyard that deserves success, they are it. They've taken conversion projects to a new level, and it's just great to hear that they've had success with this new project, Project Master. But also, Espen Oino, what a nice guy. It was nice to meet him. It was nice to spend time with him. Actually, we shot a lot of footage that we won't be using in this video, but we may be able to use in a future video. So watch out for that too. And watch out for the next video of day two at the Monaco Yacht Show.